Hello everyone. Today I'm going to try and experiment with the lightning. Uh, you may have seen in some previous videos where I'm planning to put some solar panels on the car and also have some solar panels available uh, so that I get a total of two kilowatts if I were going to stop and charge at a location. And I figure two kilowatts would get you know, five, five hours of sun uh, per day that would give me 10 kilowatt hours of power which I think would work out to be about 20 miles of range that so I, that I would get uh, additional each day from using a system like that so today I don't have all that equipment yet but I have some equipment I have some panels and I have a, um, a like a solar battery charger and so I'm going to try and put together some stuff and I'm going to test out uh, what I can do with what I have and uh, see how that works out. So I'm just going to lay them on the truck. I'm not mounting them yet because uh, these are not necessarily what I'm going to end up using, but uh, just to get sort of an idea, like am I, what, what will I get today from the sun? Will I be uh, with six or 700 uh, watts? You know, would I be, is it any usable range? So, you know, we'll see. Well, in the end, I had to uh, really kind of rearrange the panels for the maximum watts that I could get. Um, so I ended up with four on top of the roof. And, and well, three 100 watt panels on the toenail cover, then plus what is supposed to be a 200 watt panel next to it for a total of 900 watts, but that's just to get uh, hopefully 500 watts. So this is a Yeti 1500X, and I believe that means that it can store uh, 1.5 kilowatts. Uh, but the neat thing about this is for solar charging, the built-in input will take in 600 watts of from solar panels but you can buy this additional module which will take another i think it's even up to 350 watts so together you could have um, 950 watts of solar coming in which would uh, help to recharge the battery fairly quickly now when it gets to down to right now it's down to 15 percent or 14 percent and at that point, these outlets shut off because what's going to happen is I have this um, charger, which has a setting on it where I can change uh, the number of amps that it draws. And so I'm going to change it to the lowest, 6 amps, so that's going to draw somewhere between uh, six and 700 uh, watts. But the solar panels are only going to supply maybe 500 at the peak of the day if I'm lucky. So um, this is going to act like a buffer. What I'll do is I'll plug in the solar panels and then I'll let it start charging up. And at some point when it gets close to 100%, I'll then plug in the charger and it'll start to draw on it. And hopefully, um, even though there's like more than 100 watt difference in what's going out versus what's coming in, it'll let it last throughout the day. All right, the truck is now in the position where it's going to get sun, at least until 2.30 or 3. And I've got all the panels plugged in. So um, it's trying to take a charge right now. It's still early in the morning. It's, uh, it's 8.30. The sun's still at quite an angle, so it's only getting 250 watts or so. But um, this will charge up, right now it's at 14%, um, when it reaches something like at least, say, 80% or so, I'll come out and I'll plug in the charger 
and get that started. And checking the Ford Pass app, I can see that I'm at 64% state of charge and 133 miles of range to begin with. Okay, it's now 11 and I've had the, uh, I've been charging since 8.30. The battery now is uh, charged up to 75%, which I think is probably over um, one kilowatt. So that will be a pretty good buffer. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the charger and start charging the truck. I have this set to six amps. ahead and plug this in. And it's initiating a charge. Let's see how many watts it's pulling. Six hundred fifty. 40, 650 or 40. So we'll just let that go. It's after three o'clock and the panels are now mostly in shade. So I don't know how much more the battery is going to get. It's only getting, uh, it's only getting 145 watts from panels and the battery is at 18%. So, eh, I guess I'll call it a day. See what we're getting. So, we got up to 138 miles of range and 66% charge. Reviewing the numbers from today, we started out with 64% of charge on the battery and an estimated 133 miles of range. After approximately six hours of charging, we had reached an estimated 138 miles of range for a gain of approximately five miles. We also increased the state of charge to 66% for a gain of 2%. I didn't have an exact method of calculating the number of watt hours delivered to the truck. The Ford Pass app does keep a charging log, but it doesn't provide that detail. But I was able to roughly calculate the number to about 2000 watt hours based on observation during charging. This number is supported by calculating 2% of the total battery size of 98 kilowatt hours, which also equals about two kilowatt hours. Likewise, checking the mileage by calculating 2% of 230 miles equals 4.6 miles of range, which is close to the five miles reported. So to extrapolate this out further to see how it jives with our 20 mile per day target, which I estimate is needed for solar overlanding, two kilowatt hours is one fifth of the 10 kilowatt hours needed to achieve that 20 miles as I outlined in my previous video, linked in the description below. The two kilowatt hours were achieved with six hours of charging at approximately 500 watts per hour. So if I can supply 2000 watts with additional panels, I would probably be able to reach the 10 kilowatt hours per day figure. And since 10 kilowatt hours is five times the power produced in today's test, I can confirm that the likely additional range that would be realized with such a system would be five times 4.6 miles or 23 miles. Well, now for lessons learned. I know for one that I need to invest in some really efficient, high quality solar panels because the random collection of solar panels that I use for this experiment uh, didn't quite produce the output that I was hoping for. I also need to start looking for some high quality components like this Victron Bluetooth enabled MPPT uh, controller. Overall though, I think the experiment showed that I'm on track to uh, being able to put together a system that will uh, produce 
10 kilowatts and at least 20 miles of range per day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see how this project progresses. And remember to leave comments and thank you for watching.